Tom Sachs. So I don't know about you guys, but I've seen this weird renaissance of people basically getting back into Tom Sachs, right? The contemporary artist, designer, um, agent provocateur, um, and just all around legend who unfortunately was involved in a bit of a scandal because he was accused of abusing some of his, um, you know, employees and stuff and basically creating a bit of a hostile, um, you know, working environment and also turning up to Zoom meetings in his underwear, which for some reason constitutes sexual harassment. Not to show why that's the case, but turning up to a meeting in your underwear is paramount to being Harvey Weinstein. But whatever, it is what it is. In the process, people like myself who are fans of Tom Sachs, because of the uh, because of the collaboration he does with Nike, were upset because the Nike Mars Yard is one of my favorite sneakers of all time. And one of the sneakers outside of Yeezys, my, my Nike Mars Yards were the one shoe that I had that got compliments from people that weren't even into shoes. And now, obviously, he's kind of got cancelled for that. Nike terminated his deal with them, and we're not going to get any more Nike Mars Yards. But I've seen a renaissance. I've seen a flipping revival of Tom Sachs on the timeline because he's doing this bodega thing. So according to Hypebeast, he's got this um, studio that he's doing. As you can see on the Instagram, you've got some pictures there of it. But the Hypebeast article says, Cactus Plant Flea Market and Tremaine Emery of Denim Tears presents Junk exclusive. Um, Cactus Plant Flea Market and Tremaine, um, Denim Tears founder Tremaine Emery presents Junk, Just Junk literally. Um, CPFM and Emery are presenting Just Junk, a week-long exhibition and temporary shop at the Bodega 245, an enigmatic experiment space located at 245 Center Street in New York. And because this is an art installation overseen by two modern masters of merchandise, there is, guess what, merch. High Snob Bounty got an exclusive debut of the commemorative t-shirt created by um, Cactus Plant Flea Market, seen on the, on the image below. It releases on May 2nd to coincide with the launch and wears um, artwork from Tom Sachs, who founded Bodega 245 in 2016. The experiment previously on I Hate Us restarted in April 2024. So Tom Sachs is coming back with two very mainstream, you know, streetwear collaborations. So after all the abuse allegations, after being cancelled by Nike, he's been co-signed immediately by Cactus Flea Plant Market and obviously Dead in Tears and Tremaine Emery. Um, it says here, Sash, who's um, Sachs, whose long-time Nike partnership ended in 2023, illustrate ended because obviously of the scandal, illustrates the immutable Cactus Plant Flea Market smiley on the logo. In contrast to the Made in Switzerland lingo, however, T-shirts is made in America. It's not only the limited edition drop. Going down 245, Emery um, is contributing to the collaboration with a sweater design in homage of the video store owned by his parents. The store name is Just Tapes, inspired by the Just junk monica stuff is irreplaceable in the end emery on instagram is just junk memories however da, da, da. so we obviously got some pictures here maybe of some of some merch he's going to be showing there that's obviously the jumper that i guess his parents owned is this is this one of the reasons why people say tremaine grew up rich because or somehow middle class because his parents had a video store back in the day huh this might be one of the reasons why people don't take his um, systemic racism controls America thing seriously because it seems like his parents were very well educated, um, seemed like they had business chops that they obviously passed down to him. And, you know, especially back then, I don't know if this is the 70s or 80s, his parents had a video store, a video, a VHS store, which is probably equivalent to having a fucking, you know, to owning a fucking mini Target. I don't know if that's true. Um, The caption, he says, context, mum and pops Dukes had a video store in the late 80s called Just Tapes. Our store sweatshirt was designed by Play from Kid and Play, who worked at the store as well. Yo, is Tremaine Emery a Nepo baby? Is Tremaine Emery a Nepo Rastafarian, a Nepo man? A Nepo Negro. Is that possible? Can you be a Nepo baby and be black? I wonder if you can be a Nepo baby and be black. I don't know. But fucking hell, Tremaine. Systemic racism controls America and your parents had a fucking video store at the height of VHS. <laughs> That's fucking wild. They had their own mini blockbuster. Okay. Um, our sweatshirt was designed by Play from Kid and Play. Wild. Um, it was the first iteration with, the, with if it was my first iteration with design. The video store was my first interaction with art, style, and storytelling. I watched thousands of movies that still form um, me to this day. I miss the store and the tapes, but I really just miss the customers, store clerks, and my mum the most. Because the stuff is replaceable in the end, it's just junk. So just junk and cactus in our temporary shop, but they're gonna come through. So you see that stuff going on there, blah blah blah. Anyway, apart from all that stuff, I'm wondering now. Can we please forgive Tom Sachs? Can we please forgive Tom Sachs for these? Can we get Tom Sachs on the timeline? Can we make Tom Sachs a thing again so we can have these shoes back? 
please I beg you for the love of God can we all forgive Tom Sachs I know he's an abusive guy I know allegedly he threw moleskins at his flipping employees I know allegedly he turned up to meetings in his underwear which makes him out to be flipping you know um, R. Kelly or something but can we forgive him because who else is making Nike collaborations at this level who else is making shoes of this type of quality of these Mars Yar 2.5s and we lost these by the way these were the Mars Yars 2.5s that were due to come out but then as they were due to come out Tom Sachs got fucking cancelled for being a bad boss look at them they've got this amazing I don't know what this what this type of material is on the upper on the toe box as well on the paneling on the side that's almost see-through it's kind of like a parachute type material I'm assuming it's obviously waterproof it obviously can um it slicks oil pretty well you've got this rubberized toe on the front so you can wear these when you're working around the fucking you know when your little work area in your little man cave if a hammer drops on your toe it won't fucking hurt you you've got the amazing midsole that gathers dust and keeps dust off at the same time Time. you got the upper which you all know and love with the brown and the red on there you got the fucking off-white laces you got the reinforced eyelets because I, I had my original ones that unfortunately ripped when I was wearing them too hard and pulling laces too tough because the rips will kind of rub against the fucking eyelets but now you got reinforced eyelets to make sure the fucking rip doesn't happen on the suede these are beautiful shoes and we don't have them anymore because you know people got too sensitive because tom Sachs, the fucking you know agent provocateur and the design guy allegedly is a bit of a bad boss right as this article says in 20 when, when was the article dropped i forgot when it happened but basically this article kind of details some of the things that happens here the headline is former tom Sachs employee detail new allegations of, of meager pay dehumanizing work for the artist and his wife sarah hoover so allegedly tom Sachs and his wife oh shit um allegedly um were running a bit of a you know we're running a bit of a sweatshop with that tom sack studio that they were running it's, he was a hard boss hard man but again look at his face do you think this guy is going to be a great manager do you think he's going to be a very humanizing and nice person to work with probably not you don't really be able to you're not able to create work of this level you're not able to have a bodega of this ripping coolness level and also be a nice guy it doesn't work like that right you have to be a bit of a cunt to be this dude so i'm not really surprised that that was the case but i looked back and i decided to check online and saw this post from the first nike craft wear test program i'm not sure if you guys remember but when the tom sack shoes originally came out there was this whole wear test um thing going on where essentially tom sacks created this whole world around the shoes that involved you using them the whole premise behind it was like hey don't put these shoes on a pedestal don't put them in fucking white clear boxes don't put them on those horrible sneaker things that people have where it makes a shoe float in the air no these shoes are to wear these shoes are to fucking do things with go to the gym daily commute whatever and he did this whole entire video presenting his idea methodology behind it and i don't think you get this level of um you don't get this level of creativity and presentation when it comes to Nike collaborations anymore. No one puts in this type of effort. So I think for this reason alone, we need Tom Sachs back at Nike ASAP, please. In development, failure is always an option. Failure is an opportunity for improvement. Testing in a controlled environment Look how cool that is. only get you so far. Eventually, you need the real world. Versatility breeds durability. In the studio, we are specialists. That shit looks so cool. I want those shoes so badly. Honestly. Give them to me. I'll take the abuse. We are athletes. <laughs> we push our equipment to meet our unique demands. There is a limit to what we can anticipate. Science is knowing what you don't know.
We need your help. Help us find the sweet spots. Help us find the weak points. Look how cool that looks, man. Come on, bro. Look at these shoes, man. Bring Tom Sachs back Help at Nike ASAP. Wear these shoes to death. Bring him back, man. Bring him back. Look how cool these fucking shoes are. To join our wear testing program, post a one minute video to your Instagram feed. The opening shot must list your Instagram handle, your location, and your shoe size. Explain why you want to join. Tag Tom Sachs and use the hashtag NikeCraftWearTester so we see it. Do you take these shoes to have and to hold, to wear and to tear, and document daily? Can't really see the shoes. Do you swear to return these shoes upon completion of the experiment? It's raining a bunch. We require hard work and commitment. This is a collaboration. This is your chance to leave your mark. So anyway, those that was the original Nike wear test with the last one before obviously the collaboration got cancelled unfortunately because um people accused Tom Sachs of being a piece of shit boss. Reading the actual allegations themselves, reading them back, they don't seem that bad. I'm not gonna lie. He seems like a bit of a cunt, he seems like a bit of a wanker, he seems like somebody that a lot of people would find insufferable. But I think if you've worked in design, if you've worked in fashion, if you've worked in the restaurant industry, you've obviously encounter somebody like this he's a bit of an egomaniac right so let's look at the article from 2023 that details some of the allegations it says um curbed which first reported the allegations noted that many of the employees described the studio as a cult which again shouldn't be surprising you've seen the video it is quite cultish but again some of the best cults design wise some make some of the best things i think when steve jobs was around apple was a bit of a cult and look what steve jobs did under apple so being in a cult isn't so so bad um the people that are in flipping scientology seems like they're having a bit of fun over there including sex himself who wants stress to vogue i mean that in the manson family kind of way in that we're totally committed to this way of life um almost all of the allegations levied at him are in the story now five former um tom sachs employee spoke to artnet news on the condition of anonymity because they signed an nda and have reported new details about the job's alleged unsafe conditions to be fair if you work at a design studio and they make you sign an nda i know it's typical of america because america is kind of you know you guys are a bit weird over there but if you work for a design studio and they make you sign an nda there's probably some bullshit going on there but you take it because the chance and the opportunity is more beneficial than you know however triggering or red flaggy that nda is because you know again it's just a fucking design studio why well, i need to fucking have a sign in the nda probably reason why because it's a fucking shithole to work at it continues backlash against sax from those in the art and sneaker worlds have been swift but for so far nike has partnered with the artist for 11 years has not announced any consequences tom has never harassed anyone he has never tried to do that cool anyway so here's some of the allegations some past workers at sax studio say that they were required to perform menial tasks not mentioned on their job descriptions and to stay working late into the night often for minimum wage Again, very normal in design, fashion world, not that surprising, I don't give a fuck. For years, minimum wage was standard for some employees at SAC Studio. When New York raised, when New York raises the minimum wage from $12 to $15 per hour in 2019, SAC reportedly told employees to consider their new legal mandate pay increase as a promotion. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. <laughs> okay, Tom Sachs sounds like a cunt. <laughs> New York raises the fucking minimum wage and then he says, hey, that counts as a promotion. Don't ask me for anything anymore, okay? That or, That's already a promotion. Don't ask me anything. Okay, let's see what he, he did as well. Um, Sachs postperson denied the claim. They confirmed the store employees received the minimum wage but said that I was... Some workers claimed that more meaningful promotion occurred when they stopped being asked to perform duties that apparently had nothing to do with making art, like running Evans for Hoover. So you got promoted if you decided to go what? And grab her a sandwich, or buy her a fucking Birkin. Is that so, is that so bad? Come on, bro. Um, the people who did the, the more low-level assistant jobs were constantly asked to do stuff for Sarah. They were technically um, supposed to be studio employees, but to work their way up the ladder, they had to do all these Sarah Hoover tasks. That's nothing too wrong about that. She wants you to get her a fucking sandwich, a fucking, you know, chicken Caesar salad. Get that shit and get moved up, bro. 
none of us signed up to work for Sarah Hoover Studio. None of us felt that we would we could say no because she was the boss's wife, as you shouldn't. Like, say yes and keep your mouth shut, learn what you need to learn and then bounce. The distinction between supporting Tom's personal life and his studio work has not been clearly de delineated as it should have been. Tom is making changes to ensure the studio employees only perform tasks related to studio pro. I don't think you can delineate about these type of things. The way they kind of conduct themselves based on the video that we just seen here for the Nike craft test thing. And obviously, if you guys are familiar with um, Tom Sachs, you know about his 10 bullet philosophy and shit. You can't be Tom Sachs and do this sort of stuff like one foot in, one foot out. You kind of do it all the way in. It's a bit of a cult. It's a bit of way of life. It kind of requires 100% dedication. Like, this is not so surprising to me. So I think these guys, again, are crying over something that's very obvious. You only have to watch a couple of videos and to find out what the kind of, what the vibe is of Tom Sachs overall, right? And that's Tom Sachs' wife. Um, continue there. Allegations against Sachs first emerged when after he and Hoover posted a w widely mocking job ad first brought to light by the blog Filthy Dreams, where the self-described high-profile art world family sought an assistant to perform an absurd range of responsibilities. The candidate will provide child care for their son, write their social media posts, book their travel, pick up their clothes from high-end stores, manage dog systems, organize closet systems, tend to rooftop plants, and provide IT support, among dozens of other tasks intended to make the life of the couple in every way isn't that a normal pa role though isn't that what an assistant does they put out a job advert for an assistant for a wealthy art family in the whatever manhattan area of fucking new york isn't that what they would want you to do look after their son write their social media posts book their travel tickets pick up their clothes from dry cleaners and store that's standard assistant for like a rich person i don't again you don't you don't have to do it if you don't want to but complaining about it is weird continuing um i'd pick up clothes for sarah hoover from chanel i'd be holding this bag full of twenty thousand dollars worth of clothes and would be like this bag is worth more than me and get your money up man why are you complaining that they've, they've got money to spend on clothes that you can't afford just pick up the clothes and keep it moving like honestly this these people I, I don't think people have worked internships like i've worked fashion internships where i only got paid travel my travel fare and sometimes they'd be tight and not give you even the travel ticket money so the fact that they're paying you a salary and telling you to pick up some chanel clothes which would then lead for you to get a promotion what's what's wrong with that suck it up bro or go somewhere else um said stacy who said 20 pound an hour to start um she noted that even the significant overtime she only took home about twenty six thousand after taxes that is standard working in a studio as an assistant you're not meant to make loads of money when you go to work in a studio uh, even for a designer you do it number one to learn skills that you can then take on in other places to go work usually most especially when it's a small studio especially when it's a influential kind of like niche artist like tom Sachs, they're not going to pay you well they're going to give you a good opportunity you're going to have a lot of hands-on experience you're going to have a lot of ownership um you're going to learn directly from the founder you're going to see them doing their work all that invaluable experience that you probably will never get if you work for a big corporation but the pay is never meant to be great it's always meant to be you know all right but the lifestyle it affords you you get invited to all the cool events your 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 the, the studio you're working or the place you're working or the bodega whatever is a hub for all these interesting people in the scene that you might cross paths with networking i think the opportunities of working there and having your name attached to him pre-allegations it's probably worth the shitty pay. I'm not going to lie. It really probably is. Um, obviously, if they treat you like absolute shit and they mock you and it gets a bit abusive, you can bounce. But I don't think it's that crazy. You're not meant to be paid like 40 grand. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to work. That's not how it works. Anyway, employees low pay con contrasted sharply with Saxon Hoover's lifestyle. So they're complaining that the founders of the company make more or live more lavishly than they do as employees. That's what always happens. Welcome to capitalism, bitch. What did you expect would be happening? Um, if anything, it should give you a, an idea of what not to do. So you work for them and then what you do when you have your own company is that you don't repeat the same mistakes that they did. That's what usually people do. But anyway, Stacey record preparing meals for Napoleon, Hoover's late French bulldog. They got a bulldog called Napoleon. That's fucking hilarious. All natural wild rabbit, whole food spinach, aloe water, coconut oil. Sometimes I had to sit on the floor and spoof it. <laughs> so the dog called napoleon is eating better than some of the employees that's hilarious i love it the dog is actually eating better than the employees um and then i would have to be woofing down pizza at the bathroom that was left over from meetings because i didn't have enough money for food well that's your own responsibility isn't it that's your own problem if you don't have money for food 
and you're having to eat the f pizza that they have in the store or in the bodega to feed you, that's more of a you problem. I don't think that's a Tom Sachs thing, to be fair. I know 26000 is isn't a lot of money, but you should be able to have food. Like, the fact that you're relying on fucking charity from your fucking studio is kind of sad. You shouldn't even... I would, I'll tell that to my grave. I'm never admitting that. A spokesman for the studio confirmed the assistants were responsible for preparing veterinarian prescribed meals for the dog. <laughs> uh, just drop him is hilarious. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm in the minority here, but I want him back. Honestly, I want him back. I think Tom Sachs is desperately needed. Some of the Nike collaborations are super fucking boring. No one's doing it like him. We need Tom Sachs back at Nike ASAP. I don't fucking care. And if some of his friends, especially someone like a Tremaine, Tremaine is allegedly the voice of the downtrodden, the voice of the minorities, the voice of the voiceless, and he's here supporting Tom Sachs despite all those abuse allegations. If he's okay with it, Nike should be okay with it. That's my personality. That's my perspective. That's what I think. And I will not budge on that. I absolutely refuse to budge on that i really really do